So I believe that, yes, there is sometimes genetic predispositions in some individuals to developing atrial fibrillation, but it's taken in the context of all of these other modifiable risk factors, such as being overweight, high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, alcohol, even thyroid disease, various other things can also interact, whether they exercise or not, to determine when or if they're going to develop atrial fibrillation. Having a predisposition doesn't mean automatically you will develop atrial fibrillation, but it does mean it's much easier for you to, and it's much easier for you to develop it at an earlier stage than other people. But it's not the same thing as I'm born with it. And truth be told, I can certainly tell you from personal experience, treating patients for this for the last 20 years, nine times out of 10, when a patient says to me, you know, I think this is hereditary because I have it, and my parents had it, and now my brother just got it. And I say, okay, well, how old is everybody? Well, the patient himself is 60 or 70 years old, sibling is in their 60s, and the parents are in their 80s and 90s. Truth be told, in that situation, it's probably not hereditary it's just likely that they all lived long enough and got old enough to develop the atrial fibrillation. Because as we said, once you get in your 60s and 70s and 90s, 80s and 90s, the likelihood of AFib goes up significantly. And so it could just be that they just got it all from getting older and it wasn't actually hereditary. Now, if you say the family, everyone has it and they're all in their 20s and 30s, well, then there is probably a genetic predisposition in that family.